Good evening and welcome to our evening service here at St Michael and All Angels Parish Church in Barrel. My name's Callum, I'm the vicar here and uh, welcome to our new mini recording studio. Uh, it's great to be uh, together uh, in time or at least in sharing this service wherever you're watching from, whatever time you're watching at, you are most welcome. Uh, just a slight note on the timing of our service. Um, we won't always have an evening service for as long as we're having to record these and not be able to gather here. Um, but because we had a formal act of worship this morning um, at the War Memorial through our videos, um, I thought it'd probably be good to do something slightly more informal um, and slightly more focused um, on our life together as a community as we follow God together. Um, so that's why we're doing an evening service this week, but next week it'll be back to normal. Uh, with a service in the morning. Go back to our uh, series in the first lockdown. You can download our order of service should you wish to follow a paper copy, but hopefully the words will appear on screen next to me. And uh, although we're a dispersed community once more, although we're worshipping in our homes, we're still worshipping the same God. That same God is still with us wherever we are. And so uh, as we come to worship, I invite you to just Take a moment to breathe, to pause. You don't need to panic, you found the video. Um, you don't need to find the right link, you're here. Just acknowledge the presence of God in the same space that you're in as we come to worship and the responses will appear on screen. Join in with the bits in bold. Let us draw near to God. God draws near to us. Let us listen to God. God listens to us. Let us open our hearts. God gathers all in the place of the heart. Let us be nurtured by the words of eternal life. God, yours are the words of life and life abundant. Amen. We have our first hymn, Jesus Shall Reign. reminded of Jesus's commandments as we come to that point in our service where we ask for his forgiveness and are then reminded of his forgiveness for us upon the cross. For our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear O Israel the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, 
love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. So we say together, we are sorry for the times when we have lived, as if our faith made no difference to our values, for the times we have turned away from the pain of others, for the times we have been wrapped up in our own concerns. Lord, forgive us and heal us. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is Remembrance Sunday. Uh, but it is also the third Sunday before Advent and so we're going to use the collect for this particular Sunday as we come to read God's word. Almighty Father, whose will is to be restored to all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're gonna have uh, an all age song, so if the kids are still up, uh, you can dance around with them to this. Uh, The big family of God. like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but God loves
Romans 5 verses 1 to 11. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if we, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in our God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Thank you for our reading, Imogen. If you could go back in time, to any period of time, anywhere in the world, I wonder where would you go? And if I had to give you another criteria, that you could go anywhere in the world and meet anyone in the world, but you had to go and meet someone, and only one person, who would you go and meet? It's a big question, isn't it? Your mind might be racing now. Oh no, who is it I would go and see? Why would I go and see them? Because that is the next question. Why would you go and meet that particular person? Are they someone that you're just interested in? Someone you've got a few questions for? Maybe it's the Apostle Paul and you've got a few questions for him. Is it someone you've got a bit of beef with and you want to kind of go and sort them out before they know you're coming? Or is it actually someone who's a hero? Someone who you admire, someone who has inspired you, someone who has encouraged you uh, just by the way they lived their life. We all have heroes. We all have people who inspire us, who we look up upon, uh, who we wish we could be more like. And amongst all those heroes, we also have people whose lives we see and maybe, if we're being really honest with ourselves, we get a little bit jealous. It could be all the friends that we have on Facebook and Instagram and we see all the great things that they're doing in their lives, the, the great achievements that they've had and we kind of go, oh, I wish I had that. Or it could be um, that you've got children and grandchildren and you see the great opportunities that they have and you kind of go, oh, I wish I could have that. I missed that. Or it could be you could see people uh, attempting to live life as normal at the moment and actually you just can't do normal at the moment because it's not safe and you're a bit fed up. In this lockdown, in this second lockdown, it's really easy to get to be despondent, to get fed up, to get frustrated, to look around at other people and go, why are they getting that when I can't? One of the great joys of social media is we are more connected than we have ever been. One of the low points is actually people only tend to share the really good things in their life. They don't ever tend to share when they're having a really bad day or when things are going really, really wrong. But because we only ever see the really good stuff, sometimes it makes us feel bad about ourselves. Sometimes it makes us question, well, why do they get all the great things and not me? Sometimes it might even lead us to question God. God, why are you blessing them but not me? I come to church every Sunday or I watch Callum on YouTube every Sunday. That's a penance no one should have to take. And that's why I've chosen our reading from Romans 5 today. Paul is writing to the church in Rome. Um, the general persecution of Christians hasn't begun fully yet. But Christians were not looked upon with favour. Uh, life wasn't easy for them. Paul, in his first and secondary missionary journeys around uh, what we would now call Europe, around the Mediterranean Sea, 
Um, he was kicked out of most of the cities he visited. And if he wasn't kicked out, he left in a hurry because he knew he was about to get stoned. And that's not stoned with the drugs, that's people picking up rocks and throwing them at him in the hope that they might kill him. And so he's writing to a church who are seeking to live out the ways of Jesus in a society that is not Jesus focused. He's trying to encourage them in faith in a society that's more built around the worship of other gods uh, and, uh, and of other systems. And he says, we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. We're all suffering in one way or another. And you might be like me that says, actually, I'm not suffering a lot at the moment. I just can't go out and do things. Yeah, I haven't seen my family a long time, but actually I'm not suffering a lot compared to many others. I've got food on the table. I'm not particularly ill um, and I've got freedom to move to a certain extent. Actually, some of you might feel like you're suffering quite a lot. And what Paul encourages us in this is that when we're suffering, something else is going on. Because God does not pour out suffering upon the people he loves or even the people that choose not to love him. He's not a God of vengeance. He's not a God that seeks to make people's lives a misery. And so when we're suffering, we know that God is with us because we are told that suffering produces endurance and endurance, uh, perseverance comes from God. And so if you're suffering, if you're finding this lockdown difficult, uh, if you're finding other things in your life difficult, Paul tells us, and so be encouraged, be reminded that God is with us and God is providing the strength for us to continue in these difficult times. Because with the strength of endurance, our characters are shaped. God calls us to be more like Jesus. To be more like Jesus is to follow his teachings, to look at his life and to seek to replicate them in ours. Now I'm not saying that you need to go and find someone who would be willing to crucify you but you need to be prepared to live a life that is honouring Jesus in all things, which sometimes might be the slightly harder path. We're called to be humble. We're called to serve. We're called to be generous. We're called to love other people. And sometimes that might be at our expense. And sometimes that might be really difficult. But Jesus suffered. He suffered humiliation. He suffered rejection. He suffered isolation from God. He suffered the most brutal and painful death this world knows. And within all of it, God strengthened him by his Holy Spirit. And God shaped his character. The Jesus we saw on earth was God made human. The Jesus we saw in the resurrection was Jesus made God again. Within Jesus, we saw something of the divine nature, both in his humanly life and in his resurrection life. That character was shaped and forged through his experiences. And so through this lockdown, through the experiences of this lockdown, our lives can be transformed and shaped by the grace of God. We can come out of this lockdown as better people, more Jesus-like. And we can do that because of hope. Suffering produces endurance, which produces character, which produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. The greatest hope all of us have is that death is not the winner. Is that death is not the end. Jesus, at the resurrection, overcomes the power of death, overcomes suffering. And marks and forges a new way of life. A way of life that is focused upon God, 
a way of life that is focused upon complete healing and restoration, a way of life that is focused upon heaven, a way of life that says, you matter to God. Yes, you, you matter to God and he loves you. When all else fails, when life feels lonely, when lockdown is just getting a bit too tiresome, know that lockdown does not undo the resurrection. Lockdown does not isolate us from Jesus, for he is with us. And in our striving over the next three and a bit weeks, or even three and less weeks, Let's be praying that God gives us endurance to undergo this lockdown, this change of life. Let's be praying that our characters may be changed more into the likeness of Jesus. And let's be focused upon the hope of the resurrection, that we are loved by God, that God walks with us, and that we matter to him. Amen. We're going to have our next piece of music.
dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless than before the throne. So we declare our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our time of prayer, you might find it helpful to have a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to go and get mine now. So hopefully you can see that. Mine's slightly larger, um, just because I thought that might be helpful for you. Uh, let's put that there. Great. And so on your piece of paper, as we come to pray, I want to encourage you to draw a cross. So I'm just going to make it slightly thicker so you can see it, hopefully. So uh, there's one line and then there's another line like that. Okay, and now what you've got is obviously you've got a cross, but you've got four quadrants. And these four quadrants are going to help us to pray. And so the first one, we're going to write at the top this. Hopefully you can see that. I might need to, to move it slightly closer and hopefully it's not backwards. But what that says is suffering. Just take a moment to pray for those people you know who are suffering. Maybe those people who are ill. Maybe those people you know who have got mental health issues that are um, really getting them down. Maybe for yourself if you're feeling ill. But just take a moment to maybe even write in this box those names of people or even yourself who you want to lift to God because of their suffering. And when you've done that, the second word which I'm going to put here, hopefully you can see it. is endurance and I want you to pray for yourself, for your family, for this church, for our leaders and for people in the NHS that all of us may have the endurance to uh, work through this lockdown, to work through the pandemic that uh, we might all come out the other side uh, in a good state.
that word. Hopefully you can read it. Hopefully it's not backwards, but I have a funny feeling it might be as I'm recording this. It says character. Pray for yourself. Jess, in our In Conversation series a couple of weeks ago, talked about the fruit of the Spirit. What things do you want God to grow you in this lockdown? One of the things that I'm praying for is a better work-life balance uh, and uh, certainly more time in the garden. And that, for me, is about priorities. And I'm asking God to grow my uh, priorities in my life. I'm also maybe looking for a bit more joy. Uh, Samuel brings me great joy, but seeking to pour out that joy into others and to have the patience to do so. Uh, so what things do you want God to grow in your character? You might just want to list them there. And the final one. hope. We have a hope. Our hope is Jesus Christ, our sure and certain foundation. Jesus Christ who has risen from the dead, who is alive, who reigns, who is God with us. We have a hope that changes our lives. Who needs to know of the hope of Jesus Christ right now? Who do you know that needs his hope? Pray for them. And again, you might want to write their names down. Something we're encouraging folk to do is to pray for six people every day that they may know the hope of Jesus. Who are your six? And if you didn't want to do that whilst uh, watching the video, I'd encourage you to maybe go back and do it at some point this week as you pray to God. So let's offer them all to God. Heavenly Father, for all those crosses that have been drawn in these past few minutes, we offer them to you. For those who are suffering, pour out your healing. For all of us, strengthen our endurance that we may run the race without losing our focus upon you. Shape our character and fill us with your hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to move that back there. So being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. During lockdown I set people challenges every week just as a way of encouraging folk in different things and so I'm going to start setting challenges again and this week's challenge is relatively easy and um, because today's Remembrance Sunday we've been thinking about the armed forces throughout the day and if you've been watching other TV programs this weekend you may have noticed them one of the great bits of life for armed forces uh, especially when they're deployed on operations is to get post to get messages from home. It provides them with a sense of joy, it provides them with a sense of almost being back home uh, and uh, the post is very much a lifeline. And that's always been the case and especially during the Great War and the Second World War to get post was almost as important uh, as getting food because it lifted morale. So I want to encourage you, if you've got some postcards that are blank lying around or if you've got some paper that you can write a letter on, I want to encourage you to write a postcard or to write a letter and put it in the post. If you've not got any stamps, you might want to think about how you can get it there. Um, unless some of, some of you have got pigeons that are still able to deliver things. Um, but I want to encourage you to encourage someone else by sending them a postcard. Uh, I've been sending one of my nieces postcards throughout lockdown. I sent her another one this week and she, she got it this morning. 
um, or yesterday morning when I was recording. Uh, so I just encourage you, uh, write a postcard to someone this week uh, and send it to them that they might just get a bit of encouragement from getting some posts that isn't a bill uh, or a letter to isolate or whatever. So uh, that is your challenge this week. Send a letter or a postcard to someone you haven't seen in a while. We can have our final hymn, Lord of all hopefulness. as our online service draws to a close just a couple of notices really um, the first of which is this week we have two funerals here in church uh, on monday we have battle wielding's funeral and on tuesday we have uh, reverend canon rex hack former vicar of st michael's funeral uh, which will be here do be praying for his fa- their families this week um, i know that being held in your prayers is a real comfort to those who are grieving Um, Although the church is uh, closed for gathered worship, you can still come in for individual prayer and individual prayer. um, The church will be open for that uh, on Monday mornings and Thursday afternoons. Uh, There is posters uh, on uh, our notice boards. It's on SMT. It's also on our social media. Um, So do look at those things for the times if you want to come into the building and spend some time quietly praying on your own. Um, We are still collecting for the food bank. You may remember a couple of years ago, we encourage you to not just bring your your giving envelope, your money each week, but to bring something for the food bank. Uh, So if you want to bring it when church is open, please do and leave it uh, in the food bank area. Um, Or if the church isn't open and you've just been shopping or had your shopping delivered and you wanna get it to church, um, do drop it off at the vicarage. Um, if the porch isn't open just leave it outside we will always make sure we bring it in whenever we go past it so it won't be left outside for long I promise Um, and David Taylor will continue to take our food bank donations over to the food bank every Tuesday morning so um, that's the key thing Uh, 
Tuesday mornings is when we deliver it. So if you can get it to church or the vicarage before Tuesday morning, that would be really helpful. Um, and the final notice is, and I'll be sending out an email uh, later or early part of this week, hopefully, is the Archbishops of Canterbury and York are encouraging us as a church um, throughout England to pray for our nation in this time of lockdown. So every day at six o'clock, they are encouraging all of us to join in prayer. And each day we're praying for a, a different group of people. Um, so if you're on social media, you'll know who that is. Um, they haven't produced a diary that I can send out. I only know on the day myself. So and I don't want to bombard you with emails, but I just encourage you at six o'clock every day to just stop what you're doing. And it may be helpful to pray the Lord's Prayer uh, as a way of joining in with that as we uh, pray for our nation in these difficult times, six o'clock every day. Uh, there will be a service online at 10.45 on Wednesday to mark Armistice Day. We recorded that here in church with, by our war memorials and the church wardens joined me for that. So if you want a service on Armistice Day to be uh, to watch at 10.45, Facebook, YouTube uh, or our website. And next Sunday, our service will be at 10.15am uh, and it will be exactly where you found this one. Hopefully that's all the notices. Um, if there's anything else, look out for my update. So let's pray together as our service comes to an end. Lord, send us out with your love. May our hands be your loving hands so that your compassion may be shared throughout the world. Amen. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Whatever you're doing this week, stay safe, look after yourselves, take care, God bless. <laughs>